Kenya is expecting to receive more financial assistance from the International uh, Monetary Fund by the end of the year, and it is uh, negotiating the combination of the seventh and eighth reviews of its $3.6 billion support program, according to the Central Bank of Kenya's Governor Kamal Tuge. The country and the IMF reached a preliminary agreement in June for the seventh review, but the executive board has not yet approved it due to political and economic challenges, including the removal of proposed tax hikes following deadly protests in late June. Uh, this morning, Solomon Kianga, Senior Manager of Tax and Regulatory Services, KPMG East Africa, joins me to talk about this. Uh, Mr. Solomon Kianga, it's nice to have you around. You too, and good morning to you. All right, good morning to you. Um, first, can you provide an update on Kenya's current negotiations uh, with the IMF regarding the uh, combination of the seventh and the eight reviews? Let's know at what point they are now. Okay, uh, thank you. So, Kenya opted to combine the seventh and the eighth review of the facility that they are to negotiate with the IMF. So, an agreement was reached in principle in uh, September of this year. And we expect that by December, around 1.6 trillion will be disbursed. Um, remember, and as you rightly put it, um, around 600 billion was to be disbursed in June, but because of the unrest associated with the finance bill 2024, that had to be put on hold. Hmm. Now, now, the approval of the seventh IMF um, review was delayed due to political and um, economic challenges. So, uh, would you actually say that the Ruta administration did not do well when it uh, came to managing? the issues, uh, because the school of thought or some schools of thought feel that um, there were personal interests at play, uh, policies were draconian and they were hurriedly implemented. And that is why it didn't sink down well uh, with the people and eventually uh, turned into the instability that we saw. So I think um, Kenya already was in a precarious position because uh, debt was at around 10 trillion by the time the new administration came into place. So there was an emphasis on fiscal consolidation and part of that exercise involved engaging IMF so that you were able to get a facility. Um, at the time then the obvious fiscal consolidation measure that was in place was revenue mobilization and that's why the Finance Act 2023 came into place, had some very, what would be called, hard taxes such as the affordable housing levy and so on and so forth. Then the same trend carried over into 2024, where some closes the citizenry felt were quite draconian, introducing a levy on basic commodities, um, like high excess duty on cooking oil, and so on and so forth. So that more or less became a trigger for the protest that we had. And really, the, the protests were really around yes, uh, there's no problem in paying tax, but we need to show how prudently this uh, tax uh, revenue is being spent. And that, I think, was the source of the anger from the government, from the people, sorry. Okay, so we're seeing $3.6 billion in talks, and IMF is helping to facilitate that. How impacting will that be uh, for the support program that um, it's been hoped to be brought on board uh, to actually help the Kenyan economy? Um, of course, I think in the immediate term, it will help us in managing the forex exposure that we had. Uh, um, I remember at some point in January or February this year, uh, the Kenyan exchange rate compared to the US dollar was trading at around 160. And that meant issues such as important inflation. Remember, we of that we import more than we export, and that really put a lot of pressure on the dollar. But if you are to look at it on the other side, then the fact that Kenya is receiving around 3.6 trillion in this program with the IMF, then what that means is that really there'll be a lot of pressure uh, from government to collect revenue so that they're able to honor those obligations as and when they come due. Uh, and we see that the Kenyan government is actually keen on um, you know, finalizing these talks and um, uh, securing this deal. But then why has Kenya requested uh, for an official assessment of corruption and governance uh, report from uh, IMF. Uh, how might this actually influence, you know, future financial um, support? So, um, remember I talked about um, pressure from the citizen around the expenditure side of um, the Kenyan fiscal affairs, but um, 
part of the reasons as to why Kenya requested for that governance review is number one, there was pressure from the major shareholders at IMF for that to be done because for them, they consider that as a key requirement to unlocking the additional funds that Kenya is expected to receive in December 2024. But more importantly, I think then that audit becomes important because then, number one, uh, the government is able to identify areas of weaknesses and also show that um, measures are actually put in place so that, number one, they're able to tighten the bolts around where there are revenue leakages. And this then gives that um, assurance that eventually whatever funds are put in place are being used for the intended purpose. Talk. So uh, any idea what um, the Central Bank of Kenya's current strategy for boosting foreign exchange reserves is and, and, and why that might be important um, for the economy? Sorry, I lost you for a bit. Yes, I, I was talking about the influence um, of the Central Bank of Nigeria in terms of, you know, the strategies that they might have on ground now when we talk about, you know, boosting foreign exchange reserves um, for the country and how that can actually, you know, improve the value of the Kenyan economy. If there are any plans on ground. Uh, can you hear me, Solomon? Um, I think we don't look at this more. For yes, I can. Part of this is being pushed by government. So remember, for us, agriculture um, and remittances are our key sources of uh, hard currency in Kenya. And as I was looking at the statistics this morning, then I think we are at around 4.1 months of import cover, which will be good because it helps uh, stabilize the exchange rate. Now. In terms of strategy, I think government has really been pushing for people to go out there uh, to export labor. I think there's increased emphasis on agricultural exports. Um, the other day, I think sometime last year, uh, Kenya abolished the visa requirement, and I think this was a deliberate move uh, so that um, you're able to bring in as many tourists as possible, which is also a key foreign exchange earner. So, for this, I don't think I would want to look at it from a central bank perspective because central bank really then would let us know that um, if there is a chance of the Kenyan shilling being exposed to foreign currency, then it intervenes uh, through various measures. But in terms of just ensuring that there is consistent inflow of um, um, foreign exchange, then of course CBK has a input to this, but there are broader-based policies that are in place just to ensure that the foreign exchange uh, retains stability. Okay. Well, we hope that um, the Kenyan government will be able to achieve that because we know a lot has gone into um, policies, IMF-backed policies, so to speak, uh, to actually stabilize and grow the economy. But then uh, we hope that uh, with these measures coming on board, yeah. uh, there would be some sort of achievement on, on our sides. So, uh, Solomon Kianga, Senior Manager, Tax and Regulatory Services, KPMG East Africa. Thank you so much. It was nice talking to you.